What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Another video out here in the Bait Laboratory and this one's a long overdue video. Um, we did the everything you need in order to start making your own lead based baits and today's video we're going to go in and talk about everything you need or the minimum amount of stuff that you need in order to start making your own soft plastic baits. Um, for some reason I think a lot of people are more interested in learning how to get into the soft bait making stuff so we're going to do that video today. Um, I always started off in the lead space and then started making the plastics after I got into the lead part. Um, I still prefer to do the lead stuff myself, but the soft plastic part of everything is still pretty fun to do too. And you can do a lot of really cool creations and different color colors and core shots and all kinds of laminates and different stuff like that. So, um, a lot of fun doing plastics as well. So we're going to get into the minimum amount of stuff you need in order to get started making your own soft plastic baits. So I'm going to try to keep it simple for you guys. All of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in today's video is going to be linked down in the description. So make sure to go into the description, start clicking on some of those links, start checking out what the costs are to get involved in the tackle making hobby. Um, I get that question a lot is how much does it cost? Is it cheaper? All that kind of stuff. And there are some costs involved in getting started, but we're going to talk about some different molds that are going to keep the prices down a little bit for you compared to other molds that are out there. And um, a lot of the links are going to be going to the dual molds website. Uh, that way you can get everything you need at one place, get started making some baits. And if you end up finding something from another store or you want to start trying some different brand molds, you can, but everything in today's video is going to be linked to the dual molds website. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is pretty much all the different stuff that you need in order to start making your own tackle, your own soft plastic baits. We've got the Pyrex clips, we've got the gloves, we've got the microwave, we've got all of our clamps, we got measuring cups, pearl powders, glitters, molds, thermometers, injectors, and last but certainly not least, the Plastisol. All right, so one of the first things that we're gonna talk about is the Plastisol. What this is is a one gallon box, basically a Plastisol. There's a plastic liner on the inside that has the actual Plastisol inside of it. Obviously you got the spout right here. So what you can buy is you have the soft formula, a regular formula, and a hard formula. What I like to do is just buy the soft formula and if I want to make it even softer, I can add softener to it. If I want to make a hardener, I can add hardener to it. Um, this is the soft baits. Crystal Clear Plastisol by Do It Molds. This is what I've been using the entire time I've been making plastics. If you've been watching any of my other videos or anything like that, this is the stuff that I'm using in my videos. When I'm using the remelts and stuff like that on baits I've made myself, it's all this Soft Baits Crystal Clear Plastisol. Um, you want to try to match up your Plastisol hard, hardness, I guess, is that the word? The the How hard your Plastisol is. You want to pair it up with the type of bait that you're using. A lot of times swim baits are going to be a little bit more hard, have a little bit harder of a plastic than your finesse baits and stuff like that. So you might try figuring out which one suits your needs the most or you can do what I do and just kind of go with the soft formula and then add hardener if you want to or you can go with you know the regular formula, add softener to it to soften it up or just play around with it and figure out which which type of Plastisol you like best for the different baits that you like to throw the most. So one thing to remember is you can buy as much Plastisol or as little of Plastisol as you want. Um, you can buy five gallon buckets sometimes, you can buy the gallon size, you can buy it in a pint. So if you just wanna try start feeling it out and trying to decide which one's gonna be best for you, just buy a little bit of it at a time and then you'll be able to figure out what your preference is and then you can just start buying that more consistently but in the beginning you might try a little bit of each until you figure out exactly what you want to have um, the majority of your baits consist of. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the injector. If you're going to make soft plastic baits you got to have an injector and my suggestion is to buy a dual injector to start off with and get one that can be taken apart. This is the dual molds dual injector and you can take it apart and basically you just unscrew this piece right here and then everything starts to slide apart. There's an Allen wrench that you unscrew this little lever right here. You can unscrew these knobs at the top and take it apart and then you have two single injectors and then you put it back together and then here you go. You have the dual injector which is gonna enable you to be able to do laminate color baits and we'll talk about those a little bit later. But you gotta get an injector, it's a necessity. So another item that you have to have when it comes to making your own soft plastic baits are the molds themselves. Now if you look closely, I have two different types of molds. This is a CNC mold and this is a cast aluminum mold. The CNC molds are gonna give you a more finished looking product 
where the cast aluminum is going to give you a little bit more of a, a faded, not so much a faded look, but it, you know the look that you have like on a Yamamoto Senko or something. It's, it's not super shiny. It's not super polished looking. That's what you're going to get when you use the cast aluminum. But these are cheaper, so it's a great way to get started in the bait making hobby in the soft plastics game because these are probably half to a third of the price of a CNC mold. Now the CNC molds are going to be a lot closer looking to what you would buy and you know your typical soft plastic bag that you would buy from the store but this is a great way to get into the tackle making hobby decide if it's something that you really enjoy doing that you want to start making the investment in the CNC molds um, but these are going to catch you fish they're going to make some great baits and you can get really good at these and, and produce some really good products with them. I've heard of people modifying these molds a little bit to give them a shinier look that's more similar to the cast aluminum bait that you're gonna end up with at the, at the end of the process all said and done. But these are great ways to get into the tackle making hobby to get your first mold to see if it's something that you're even gonna like. Because like I said, these are gonna be a lot cheaper than the CNC molds. Great way to get into it, but if you already know that this is something that you're gonna to wanna to do, you might just jump in and get the CNC molds right away. So we've talked about the Plastisol, we've talked about the molds. Now we're gonna talk about what gives that plastic the color. And what that is, is your coloring. What we got right here is Blue X2 colorant from Duo Molds. Um, there's tons of different colors out there. You kinda of have to mix and match and add a couple drops of this and a couple drops of that in order to get the specific color that you're looking for. But this is what you wanna go with, the X2 colorant. Everything's gonna be linked in the video description. But basically, this colorant is what's gonna be added to your Plastisol in order to start giving that bait the color that you're looking for, whether it's green pumpkin or whether it's watermelon or a blue or a chartreuse, whatever. You're gonna buy the colorant that you want to make your bait. So you add this to the Plastisol, you mix it up really, really good, and now you start to give that Plastisol some life, give that bait a little bit of life. Another thing that you can buy are blue, pearl, or purple highlights to your baits. So you buy this little thing of powder and a little bit goes a long way, and what this does is it starts to give your bait a pearlesque type of a look. So it's gonna give you a sheen of blue in this case. There's other pearls that are gonna give it kind of like a, a little whitish pearl hint to your bait. So it's starting to give it a little bit more life. So the pearl powders are really good to have on hand. And I would either just get the regular pearl or whatever pearl type of a color you would prefer to have. Whether you want that bait to shine a little bit of blue or a little bit of purple, a little bit of green, those are all different pearl colors that you can buy in order to add to your baits to give them a little bit of a different look. Um, the next thing that you're going to make sure you have is your glitters. And glitters are like the pearls. There's tons of different colors. There's different sizes of glitter. You can get really big pieces of glitter all the way down to little tiny pieces that are almost like a powder. But this is a green color that I have in my hand right here. And um, there's tons of different colors, but you're going to want to get a few different ones in order to have some options in order to make some different looking baits to kind of test out, see what you like, maybe make some creations that you would never have bought in the store, but end up liking yourself. And maybe they catch more fish than something you bought in the store because you're making something custom. You're making something specific to the lakes that you like to fish or something that you end up having a ton of confidence in. I don't know if you guys have been hearing in this video or not, but I have this crow. It's literally right outside my house that will not stop making noise. Whatever you call it, it's not a chirp or anything like that, but they're making the crow noise. So if you hear that and it's annoying you, I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. But the next thing that we're going to talk about is, is measuring cups, your, your Pyrex cups, stuff like that, because in order to get your right amount of glitter, your right amount of pearl powder, the right amount of Plastisol, you're going to need to be able to measure that stuff. So one of the first things that we're gonna talk about is your small measuring cups. This is a quarter teaspoon measuring spoon right here and a quarter cup measuring cup. Why I picked these ones is because these are the two that I use the absolute most. If I'm adding salt to something, I'm usually using this full quarter cup measuring cup to a cup of Plastisol or half of that, depending on how much salt I want in that bait. If I'm adding glitter or powder, I'm usually using a, a full quarter teaspoon measuring spoon or half of it. So those are usually my go-to sizes that I like to measure with. Makes it easy, it keeps everything consistent. So when I'm making something, I'm getting the same thing every single time. 
the next thing that you're really going to need to pay attention to is your Pyrex cup. Now these are Anchor Hawking Target brand measuring cups. Um, I've had one break on me inside of the microwave, but it's only happened once and these are so much cheaper than the Pyrex, so that's what I do. Um, I've heard people say that the Pyrex is a lot better, but I just don't want to pay for the Pyrex when I can get these for so cheap. So if it breaks, I'll just buy another one. But it is a little bit dangerous if they break, you end up getting the plastisol everywhere and it becomes a mess. You could get burned or something like that. So you need to make the best decision for you. Those are what I use, but Pyrex might be a little bit better because you have a little bit less tendency for them to break, for them to break or so I'm told. But I use the cheap stuff from Target, those are where I got my measuring cups, but you're definitely gonna need those. You need something that's gonna stand up to the heat in the microwave. You're gonna need something that stands up to the heat of the plastisol because everything's getting to above 350 degrees because you need that plastisol to get to 350 degrees in order for the chemical reaction to happen to where it's gonna solidify when everything cools down into your plastic molded bait. So something else that you're gonna wanna have on hand when you start making your plastics are clamps. Now the type of clamps that you're gonna use are gonna be dependent upon how many molds you're gonna be shooting at a time or whatever clamps that you decide you want to use. Now there's a couple different options. You have this style of a clamp where you just open it up, it goes onto the mold, just like so, just like that. And what that does is it keeps everything tight. And you're, you're gonna use two of them and you're gonna have one on the top like that and then you're gonna have another one just like this. So that way everything's tight and it keeps your mold nice and tight together so you don't get a bunch of flashing, which is basically when the plastisol runs within the mold outside of the actual shape that the bait's supposed to be. Um, another type of clamp is one like this. And depending, if I'm gonna be doing a over one, one mold at a time, which this is just one mold, I'm gonna be using this style of a clamp because you can stretch this out really far and you can hit, fit three or four molds in here at one time. And again, you're gonna use at least two of these in order to get a nice tight seal around your mold so that way you don't get that flashing. But you're definitely gonna need the clamps. You're definitely gonna to need to have something that keeps that mold nice and tight together because if you just close it and think it's gonna work, it's not gonna work for you. The pressure of you pushing that injector down and pushing that plastisol into the mold could open up your mold and it's gonna get everywhere and you're not gonna be able to make that bait. So you're definitely gonna need some clamps. So another item that you're gonna need is some sort of a thermometer. Now this is an infrared thermometer which basically you have the little trigger right here and you press the trigger, there's a little red dot that goes into whatever you're trying to take the temperature of, and then it gives you a digital readout on your thermometer. This is what I would suggest you get, is just get a cheap one, get a cheap digital thermometer because it's gonna make it so much easier for you to get a temperature on your plastisol. Because like I said a second ago, you want that plastisol to get up to 350 degrees, and then once you get a little bit more advanced and you wanna start making laminate baits, you're gonna need your two different colored plastisols to be close to the same temperature. And that's where something like this is gonna come in handy because you're gonna be able to get those temperatures really, really fast. If you use a thermometer where you have to actually stick it into the plastisol, it's gonna take a little bit longer for that temperature to read out. And then you're gonna have to clean it off, put it back into the next one or have two of them in order to get temperatures on your two different colors for your laminate baits. So I definitely think it's worth the little bit of extra money in order to get one of the, the infrared thermometers like this one. Um, I've used both and my preference is definitely the infrared thermometer. So something minor, but something that you definitely gonna need to have is something to mix your plastisol with. What this is, is a little knife. I think this was a dollar at Target. I didn't wanna take something like a spoon out of my, out of my kitchen and then bring it out into the garage to make these baits. So when I was buying the the uh, measuring cups, I decided to get some super, super cheap knives because it's easy to stir with. It's not collecting a bunch of stuff like the spoon would. So I like, I like to use this knife. I got this from Chris Jones on World's Worst Fishing. He does a really good job um, teaching people how to make tackle as well. And um, he suggested the knife. You can get them super cheap at Target. Um, they have spoons and stuff, but you definitely need to have something to stir your carn in, stir your glitter in, and then just to keep that um, plastisol nice and mixed up while you're heating it. So you're definitely gonna need something to stir that plastisol with in order to get your colors where you want it and to keep your plastisol warming up well. So something else that's super important that, you, that is an absolute must is some sort of 
some form of gloves to wear when you're handling this stuff because like I said, it's your plastisol is going to get up to that 350 degree range. So you're going to have glass that's really hot. You're going to have the liquid, the plastisol that's liquid really, really hot. You're going to be handling the molds that are going to get heated up by that heat from the plastisol. So gloves are going to be imperative. Um, my these this style of glove is not my favorite. Um, I've had the nitrile style glove, which I'm going to put a, a picture of that up in the video so you get an idea of what those are. I have some more on order, but these are what I've been using lately because the other ones I wore them out and it was time to get some new ones and these are what I ordered and I definitely prefer the other ones. So I got another pair of those coming on the way, but this is what I've been using. It gets the job done. The reason I don't like these as much is because the plastic ends up getting stuck in the cloth and it just kind of gets a little bit more messy. The plastic doesn't come out of the cloth as easily as the other version. So that's what I'm gonna go back to, but I definitely got some good use out of these. So these will get the job done. But another option for you guys is having a respirator or wearing a respirator so you're not breathing in the fumes from the plastisol. That's not something that I personally do, but then again, I'm not an expert when it comes to the PPE, but I definitely think it's something you should be researching. That's something that you should be looking into and something that you need to decide what you want to do. Some people are going to wear the respirator. Some people aren't. I like to have a fan blowing all the fumes outside of the garage and that's good enough for me. Is the respirator probably better? Yeah, it's probably better, but it's just not something that I've been in the habit of doing. I might start wearing one eventually, but it's not something that I've been doing right now. But if you're asking what my recommendation is, my recommendation is for you to go out and do the research and figure out what PPE that you want to wear. Like I said, just wearing, you know, long sleeves and a shirt and pants, all that kind of stuff is going to be important because this plastisol might spill, it might splatter a little bit and get on you. Like I said, I've gotten um, a burn on my stomach because of the plastisol getting on there. I've seen pictures of people with burns on their arms and hands because they weren't wearing gloves. So this stuff is important. It's stuff that you definitely need to take into consideration and make sure you do your research and decide what you want to use for PPE that's gonna keep you as safe as possible. So one last thing that you want to consider buying for making your soft plastics is a dedicated microwave to heat up your plastisol and to reheat it, to get everything melted down, to keep everything warm, to be able to start making these baits. I don't recommend using the microwave that you have in the kitchen. One, it's gonna stink up your entire house because this plastisol does have an odor, odor to it. So when you heat it up, it's gonna end up staying in the house. So my recommendation would be to go out, buy a cheap microwave that you can dedicate to your soft plastics. If you don't have a garage that you can do the soft plastics in all the time, at least have some type of microwave dedicated that you store away that you only use for that. Because I don't know what happens with, with the fumes or anything like that from the plastic. So I don't know if they get stuck in there. I don't know if that's what you want to be using to heat up your food later on or to cook your food in. So my recommendation is go to Walmart, go to Target, go wherever and find the cheapest microwave that you can. Buy that so that way you can dedicate it to your soft plastic making. So I think we've covered everything that we need to talk about that will get you the minimum amount of stuff that you need in order to get started making your own soft plastic baits. Now, when you are getting started, if you don't know what colorants to buy or what glitters to buy or anything like that, start off trying to replicate colors that you already like. And my suggestion would be to start off replicating single color baits. A green pumpkin with a black flake or a green pumpkin with a blue flake or watermelon or a black with a blue something like that that's easy to get started because you're gonna mess it up you're gonna put too much color in at some point you're gonna put too much flake or not enough color in or not enough flake or the flakes end up just not working out they just didn't match as well as you wanted you're gonna mess some stuff up there is a learning curve involved in making your own soft plastics but it's nothing that you can't overcome it's nothing that you can't get better at I have a ton of videos on how to make this stuff. There's other videos on YouTube about how to make soft plastics. So do your research, start getting some different recipes down for different types of colors that you'd like. A lot of the videos have, you know, the, the whoever's putting the video on, like myself, tells you how many drops of colorant they're using or how, how many teaspoons or half teaspoons they're using of different pearl powder or glitter or something like that. So do some research, get some generalized recipes or just get in the garage, go play around and just, if you mess up, you mess up. If you end up going too thick on a color, you can always dilute it down with more plastisol. So there's, there's really nothing that you can't mess up beyond being able to fix unless you burn your plastisol. 
but if you do something where you end up putting too much colorant into your bait and it's just thick and it doesn't look right, you can always remelt that bait back down, add more plastisol, clear plastisol to that bait, and it's gonna start to dilute that color down and make it not so thick and not and closer to what you're going for. So I hope this video is valuable to you. I hope it got you in the direction of being able to navigate this tackle making world and figure out what you need to buy in order to start making your own tackle. But make sure to check out the description of this video. All the links to everything are gonna be in there. Click around some of those links, figure out what the costs are and getting started into tackle making. But I know it's something you can do. If I can do it, you can do it. So check it out. If it's something you think you want to get into, get some of this stuff from Dual Molds and uh, have fun with it and just make it a hobby that you enjoy and i uh, hope you like today's video and if you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll make sure to answer it but again i will see you guys next time thanks for watching and if you're new please subscribe and i will see you guys next time see ya